This is one of the coolest, most customizable displays I have seen to date. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Hey, welcome back guys. I want to show you guys a really cool display today and how easy it is to get it downloaded configured and running on your machine. Now, right out of the gate, I'm going to be doing this on a Linux machine, but I have also tested this on my Mac and it works perfectly well there as well. It should work for Windows users, but you guys are going to have to do your own testing. Uh, what we've got here is 12 different customizable panes. And if we double click on any one of these given panes, we'll take this lightning example right here. If we double click on that, we get a full screen view of that particular pane that we're looking at. Let's uh, double click again to go back and we'll go ahead and double click on the forecast that was just above it and you'll see that it goes full screen as well. One other thing is over to the left hand side of this panel, we also have all of these different links that we can customize to be exactly what they, uh, we want them to be. So for instance, if we click here on this uh, weather tab that I've got, you'll see that it's going to bring in a weather graphic for us. By simply clicking the back button right up here at the top, we'll go back to the primary display. Now, let's go ahead and show you guys how to get this downloaded and running on your system. You're going to be amazed at how simple this is. The first thing we need to do is head over to github.com forward slash VA3 HDL forward slash ham dashboard. Once we get to this page, and guys, I will leave links to everything that I can down in the description below. But when we get to this page, we want to come right up here to the green code button. We'll click on it, and then we're going to click download the zip. While that's downloading, I do want to let you guys know that the developer does have his own YouTube video on this. Uh, we're going to go into a little bit more depth as to how to configure this, though, in this video today. Also, be sure to read through the directions. Things do change from time to time. This is actually the second time I have filmed this video because he made a change just a few days after I filmed the original. So always come down here and take a look at what's going on with the latest in the README file. All right, after the download finishes up, I headed over to the downloads directory, and what you're going to find is a zip file that is ham dashboard main.zip. We're simply going to right click on that and say extract here. And that's going to give us this new directory right here that says him dashboard dash main. Let's go ahead and jump into that directory and you're going to find several files. Now, these examples here are just example images of different dashboard layouts. If you want to look at that, that's fine. Otherwise, that is unneeded information. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. What we're left with is these files right here. The critical ones are config.js, hamdash.html, and wheelzoom.js. All of our changes that we're going to make are in this config file right here. So config.js. I'm going to go ahead and right click on that and say open in a text editor. The very first line is where you want to put in your call sign and if you'd like, your grid square. Now for mine, let's go ahead and get that changed out and then press control S on your keyboard to save that data. Now that we have that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to that directory that we were looking at a second ago and I'm going to right click on hamdash.html and just tell it to open in the Firefox web browser, which is the default browser I'm running on this particular Linux box. And you'll see that it loads up those panes. These other two should load here in just a second. Uh, but now I have my call sign right up here at the top. Now that we have the call sign set, the first things I want to do is update the local radar and the local satellites. So we're going to start with the local radar this morning. Let's head over to, let's see, I believe it's in this tab that I've got it open. 
This is radar.weather.gov forward slash ridge forward slash standard. And this should contain all of the radar images for the United States. Other parts of the world, uh, you're going to have to search out from your local weather office uh, one of these images that you can use to put in your dashboard. Once I'm on this page, I'm going to use Control F to bring up a search box, and I am going to search for OHX, which is my local weather office. I'll go ahead and press return, and you'll see that it brings up several of these uh, GIF files that I could use. The one I'm looking for, though, is this KOHX underscore loop dot gif. I'm going to right click on that and just copy that link. Now we're going to head back over and take a look at that config.js file and I'll show you guys exactly where to plug that in. Now I do want to point out right away that these first set of links that you see at the top of the uh, config.js file are the links for the left hand side tabs inside the display. If we scroll down just a little bit, you'll see here that we have dashboard items. These are the actual windows or the panes that you have on the dashboard. So I want to take this local radar right here and I'm just going to replace the link that he has there. So I'm just going to highlight all of it and then press control V to paste in the link that we copied just a second ago. And you'll notice that I've got uh, K-O-H-X underscore loop dot G-I-F now in that uh, particular link. So we'll press Control S to save that. And then I'm going to jump back to the display itself so that we can verify that those changes took effect. Now, don't forget, each time you make a change, you do need to come up to the top and click the refresh button or this refresh button over here on the left in those tabs should work just as well. After refreshing the page, I know that I've got my local radar loaded because I see Nashville right here in the very center. And that's exactly what I was looking for. Next, I want to change out this satellite image. So this time we're going to head over to weather.gov. When we get to this page, we'll just go ahead and click on the satellite link right here at the very top of the page. That's going to load up this next graphic where we can simply hover around to find the specific area that we want. For this example, I'm going to use the Southern Mississippi Valley. So let's go ahead and click on that. And then on the next page, we're going to click on download images. Once this page loads up, let's go ahead and scroll down to the very bottom here. And we're looking for these last few links. Now, if you want a loop here, you can use this uh, GIF file right here. I'm actually going to use this 300 by 300 JPEG for this particular example, though. So I'm going to right click on that again and go ahead and copy that link. Let's head back over to that config.js file and we'll go ahead and update that local satellite image as well. So right here, you'll see that satellite. CGL. I'm going to change that to read local satellite. Now that the header is changed, let's go ahead and change out that link with the one we just copied. Now when you're making these changes, be careful not to delete the open and closing quotation marks or the comma at the end of the line. Now that we've got that change made, let's go ahead and press Control S again to save our work. And then let's jump back to the HTML file. Right here, it's the satellite CGL that we're changing. I'm going to hit the refresh button, and we should see that latest stuff pull right in for us. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to pull ham clock into this top box right up here uh, in the right corner. Now, in order to make this work, you will need ham clock running on your local network. So my ham clock is running on a Raspberry Pi here in the shack, and we're just going to pull the data off of it and feed it into this new display. So you'll need to navigate to your ham clock instance's IP address. In my case, it's 10.10.10.192. Then we're going to give it a colon and the port number. If you haven't changed the port number on your ham clock, the default is going to be 8080. And then we're going to give it forward slash live hyphen ws dot html. 
And that should bring you to this page right here. And this just gives you a list of different things that you can use to interact with your ham clock through a web browser. I'm actually looking for this first one right up here at the top that is git underscore capture dot BMP. I'm going to copy that and right up here in the address bar, we're going to replace that live hyphen WS dot HTML with git underscore capture dot BMP. I'll go ahead and press return when I do that. And that should bring you to an image of your ham clock. Now, one thing I do want to note right here, this is just a static image. So you can't uh, interact with this display from this screen, nor will you be able to interact with it from one of the 12 panes on uh, our new dashboard that we're building out. However, I will show you another way in just a second where you can actually interact with it. For now, I'm going to go ahead and copy that address and we're going to head back over to our config.js file to make the changes. Now, if you remember, I wanted to change this ISS and RS44 position and we're going to make that ham clock. So we'll change the header right there. Down here, I'm going to take out everything, both of these links, but I want to leave the two quotation marks and the comma. I'm going to paste in that address that we captured just a second ago, and then go ahead and press Control S to save that data. Back on our dashboard, if we click the refresh button, we should see ham clock load up right here in the top right hand corner. Now, here is another issue that uh, I'm running into occasionally with this and something that I want to show you guys how to get around if you need to. Notice ham clock uh, right there, that header kind of interferes with my current temperature and some of this VOACAP data. Let's go ahead and show you guys how to fix that real quick. Back in that config.js file, let's take ham clock right here, that header, and we're just going to delete that. Now, again, you do want to leave the quotation marks and the comma. I'm going to press Control S and then jump back to the dashboard and go ahead and refresh that page. Now you'll notice without that ham clock display, it's a little bit easier to read that VOACAP and the weather data right there without that header being over it. So anytime you don't want that header, just take it out from the config.js file. Now, if you prefer a image that you can interact with, again, I can double click on this one, but I can't interact with it once I open it up full screen like this. So I'm just going to double click to shrink it back down. And then let's take a look at how to load that into one of these tabs over here on the left hand side of the screen. This time we're going to navigate to the IP address of ham clock colon 8080 forward slash live dot HTML. That should load up this window right here that you're looking at, which looks exactly like what we saw a while ago. But if you notice, if I click on the lock icon, I can unlock this display and now I can interact with it right here inside this browser window. Let's go ahead and copy the IP address of that and move back to our config.js file. Now, don't get confused as to where we're working. Remember, this down here is the 12 panes inside the main display. We have to scroll back up to the top in order to change the uh, links in the tabs on the left hand side. So I'm going to change this contest right here and we'll just call this ham clock. And then I want to take this link and replace it with what I just copied, which is that IP address colon 8080 forward slash live dot HTML. Now you will need to replace this IP address with your actual IP address for your instance of ham clock. Let's go ahead and press control S to save that and jump back to the dashboard. On the dashboard, let's go ahead and click the refresh button and we should now see ham clock right over here in our tabs. If we click on that, that's going to load up our instance of ham clock. You can see that that is a live display because the seconds keep advancing right here for the time. 
And now if I click on that lock icon, you see that it does unlock. So this is an interactive window that we can use. So it really just depends on which way you want to view ham clock. If you just want a quick snapshot of what's going on, or if you want the capabilities to fully interact with that window. Next, let's take a look at the way I'm going to use this to pull my APRS data from Yak into the display. We're going to be changing this lightning local right here this go around. But first, let's go ahead and take a quick peek at Yak so I can show you where this data is coming from. Let's go right up to the top. We'll click on File, Configure, and Expert Mode. Once your Configure window opens up in Yak, let's go ahead and click on the Transmit tab. And then you'll notice right down here at the very bottom, Yak has a mini web server built into it. What you're looking for is this port number right here, which I believe this one is default. I don't remember changing this one in the past. So we need that 8008 port in order to get this data into our new dashboard. Back inside our config.js file, we're going to scroll down because I want to add this as one of the 12 panes. And I'm going to change this lightning local right here. And we'll just call it APRS. And then let's go ahead. It's not going to be HTTPS. So I'm just going to take that HTTP out. And then I'm going to take out the rest of this. So what we're left with is HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. Now, Yak, in my case, is running on this machine that the dashboard is running on. So I can use the IP address of 127.0.0.1, but if yours is running somewhere else on your network, obviously you'll need to change that with the IP address of the machine running Yak. I'm going to give it colon 8008, and then we're going to say forward slash map.png. We'll go ahead and save that data and make sure that it updated on our dashboard. Once we've clicked the refresh button, I am seeing that APRS data right there in that window. So if I double click on that, now I have a full screen view of APRS in my local area. One other change that I want to make before we wrap this up is I prefer to see a 24 hour clock instead of a 12 hour clock. So let's go ahead and make that change now. Now this is one of those that is not in the config.js file. So I'm going to close out of that and I'm going to open the hamdash.html file. Again, we're going to open that with a text editor. Once that opens up, let's go ahead and press the control F button so we can quickly search for this. And I believe it's our 12 that we're looking for. Yep. Uh, so once you put in our 12, that's going to bring you down to roughly line 455 if nothing changes between uh, when I'm doing this and the time you see it. But you see where it says true right there? We're simply going to change that to read false. Let's go ahead and press Control S to save that. And let's take a look at our dashboard and make sure after we click the refresh page, that that AM goes away, and in fact it did, so now we're looking at a 24-hour clock. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.